My name's Edward Softwater, and I'm your traveling correspondent this week. We are very lucky to have arrive here at the Charlestown Jail to interview abolitionist and terrorist James John Brown. Sorry about that. John Brown. It is December 2nd, 1859. It's 10 a.m. He has little over an hour before he goes to his hanging for the daring capture of the U.S. arsenal at Harpers Ferry, Virginia. Harpers Ferry is located at the confluence of the Shenandoah and the Potomac. It is also the B&O Railroad hub. Well, Mr. Brown, uh, you're something of a celebrity now, uh, trying to free all the slaves of Virginia with only 23 men. Now, how exactly did you think this plan would work? First of all, let me clarify something in your introduction. I am not a terrorist. <clears throat> okay, um, freedom fighter. Now, uh, back to the question at hand. Uh, just how did you plan that this wild scheme would work? Wait a minute. First of all, I have to tell you that we, we have taken and made a, a statement, and I have made a statement back in 1840 amongst everybody around, the witnesses and everybody, to take and stop slavery. Okay. Well, um, could you give us a, a bare-bones sketch of uh, your plan to free all the slaves? Yes, it was, it was basically simple. We were going to go and free one, place, one plantation at a time. We were going to take the slaves. We were going to take them up into the mountains. We were going to arm them. Then we would come back down and we would regroup, and then we would go after and free another plantation. Eventually, we would free the entire state of Virginia. All right. Well, um, obviously your plan didn't work out, at least not the way you planned. Um, what, where did exactly did you go wrong? The main thing that went wrong, one of my men accidentally shot a black baggage handler, and then all of a sudden all hell broke loose. We had the state militia come in. We had the federal troops come in. The next thing I know, we're not being looked on as liberators. We're being looked on as occupiers. Right. Can't imagine why. Well, uh, it seems that your entire plan uh, hinged on the slaves joining up and uh, joining your band. Uh, what exactly made you think that the slaves would be willing to do that? It's a very, very basic, simple thing. God did not mean for these people to be slaves. He meant for them to be free. I see. Well, uh, does that mean it's God's fault, or whose fault was it? It was everybody else's fault, especially those stupid people down at Harper's Ferry. Right. Can't believe them. Uh, do you have any last words before you take your final long walk to the gallows? Yes, I do. And I'm going to read something to you from the Bible that has been dear to my heart through this whole campaign. And I, John Brown, now am quite certain that the crimes that have been committed by this land will never be purged without bloodshed. And in fact, it says right here in Hebrews 9.22, in fact, according to the laws of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Volumes 1 through 10 on the road to the abolition of slavery. Volumes 1 and 2. Introduction on the road to the abolition of slavery. Slavery explained in the words, writing, and songs of contemporary politicians, abolitionists, slaves, pro-slavery advocates, and others. Volume 3, Politics, On the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. The Institution of Slavery and How It Was Written into the U.S. Constitution. Volume 4, Heroes and Heroines, On the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. Liberated from the shackles of slavery, countless slaves made extraordinary contributions to society. Volume 5, Obstacles on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. Slavery culturally entrenched and protected by religious, political, and social obstacles. Volume 6, Martyrs on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. People black and white gave their lives in the fight for freedom from slavery.
Volume 7, Kidnappers and Justice on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. The law protected slavery, and the scales of justice were in favor of the slave owners. Harriet Beecher Stowe, The Evil of Slavery. Stowe reveals the people and the conditions that inspired her explosive novel about slavery and life in the South. Volume 8, The Legacy of What Slavery Left Behind. War-ravaged people struggle to rebuild their society and come to terms with the repercussion of slavery after the Civil War. Volume 9, Those Dedicated Angels on the Road to the Abolition of Slavery. Recognizing the work of 12 abolitionists whose extraordinary dedication helped to free the enslaved, these are the people who fought for a higher standard of mankind. Volume 10, Coming Soon, Summer 2013. The Beginning of Slavery indentured servants and the transatlantic slave trade. Colonial plantations needed labor, more orphans, loose women, convicts, and Quakers than the old world could send as indentured servants. So the colonists looked to Africa, and the transatlantic slave trade thrived for 450 years.